Hi everyone, my name is Natalie Ledwell and this is The Inspiration Show. Today on the show, our topic is going to be about spiritual mastery and resonance and embodiment and what do all of these new age terms mean and how do we integrate them into our life so that we can live a life of meaning and purpose. So before I introduce my special guest today, just let me uh, reassure you and let you know that once we finish watching the show, uh, if you click the link below uh, this video, if you're watching it on YouTube, take my 30 second quiz so we can figure out what is blocking you from success. So without further ado, please let me welcome my special guest today, Mr. Ken Stone. How are you, Ken? I'm excellent, Allie. It's great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Uh, it is fabulous to have you here um, and uh, being honest with everyone, I have to, actually have been doing some work with Ken. I've been going through some of his programs and it has actually uh, really facilitated a massive shift in my energy, um, in my focus, in my creativity. Um, and so I wanted to, rather than keep him to myself, wanted to share him with you and his message so that uh, he can also do the same for you. Um, so why don't we start, uh, first of all, Ken, with your story? Uh, because I'm sure that you weren't always uh, a spiritual master or doing this type of work. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so let, let's hear your story first. Sure. Once upon a time, I was a mortgage lender, Natalie, and I was uh, <laughs> I, I was bumping along in life, fairly miserable and unhappy, trying to figure out how to have more significance in my life and kind of more connection. And I started waking up uh, spiritually in the winter of 2006, 2007, learned how to meditate in uh, not until August of 2007, not that many years ago. And in September, I went to a meditation retreat, September of that year. I went to a meditation retreat and there was a fellow participant there and very distinctive looking man. And we ended up sitting randomly next to each other at the closing ceremony and we're meditating. We've been in silence for five days. We've been doing all these incredible things. And he gets out a piece of paper and he writes on it, you should be working as a healer. And I started sobbing uncontrollably, even though I had no idea what the word healer meant. So that was the turning point in my life when, when Lynn said that to me in the fall of 2007. And uh, I explored my gifts for a couple of years, tried to keep them hidden, argued with them, fought with them, <laughs> tried to pretend they didn't exist. And around about uh, August of 2010, I decided to see if it was something that other people might be interested in and began sort of formally sharing what I was learning and experiencing with other people. And it's been a wild ride ever since. <laughs> well, you and I have only been working together for a short period of time, and already it's been a wild ride. Yeah. Um, so I can attest to that. Yeah. Um, but uh, you actually uh, teach, uh, you know, spiritual foundation and spiritual mastery. Yeah. Um, and you do talk about a concept called embodiment. Yeah. Um, so let's touch a little bit on that because I, I feel that if someone is watching the show and, and you're sort of in a, a point in your life where you're going, I kind of feel numb and I feel a bit lost and I don't really know who I, who I am. I think yeah. that, um, you know, this helps to explain why we feel that way sometimes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you kind of think about it, whether or not you perceive that you have some sort of special intuitive awareness or not, everyone can see, if you look into the eyes of someone else, you can see if there's a light in their eyes. You know what I'm talking about when I say that. And when the light's gone, we can see that in certain circumstances. You know, if somebody has um, had a challenging experience or been through a rough spot in their life, uh, recovering from cancer, off to war, those types of things, and the light is gone, that's a really advanced stage of disembodiment. It's uh, the soul or the, the essence, we could say the spirit, is beginning to leave the body at that point. But when it comes in, what it's doing is it's the animating presence. It's the way that we encounter and experience what I like to think of as the divine within each of us. And when we're embodied, we, we not only animate that experience for ourselves or energize it, if you want to think of it that way, but we also transmute all the things that have been holding us back from really fully expressing who we are. And so people do report experiences of really being much more connected to themselves, maybe in ways they've never been in their lives or not in many decades uh, during the embodiment experience. And there are all sorts of other kind of wonderful side effects of being embodied, like spontaneous healing and you know, not being in anxiety or stress or depression anymore. There are just all sorts of wonderful things that come out of it. Yeah, well, I was just saying to Melanie, who's on my team, uh, yeah. as we were waiting for you to come on the camera, that uh, yeah. you know, uh, since I've come back, I actually don't feel like drinking alcohol. Yeah. 
yeah. first time ever. Like I'll, I've actually, I'll yeah. sit down and have a glass of wine with dinner and drink a little bit and go, yeah, I don't feel like this and tip it out. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm Australian. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a big deal. But These two <laughs> things aren't supposed to go together. <laughs> But, you know, and I'm also, my body feels, you know, better. I'm losing weight. I'm, yeah. um, I'm you know, like I said, I'm more creative. Um, I, I, you know, I feel so much better in myself um, because I, I'm doing this type of work. So when we say, like, you know, uh, disembodiment, yeah. um, I mean, that doesn't mean the soul leaves the body, obviously. No, but not completely. If it did, we would have a transition on our hands. That would be dropping yeah, the body or death. Or side, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but in disembodiment, so when the body or when the soul is fully embodied, we're down in our hips. It's a very, very powerful place to be. There's a lot of uh, writing and energy around sort of moving out of the head into the heart. And that's a profound transformation that I'm sure many of the community here have experienced. But when we move into our hips, we're actually planting that energy further into the body and really opening up in a wide way. And so when we disembody, we just go backwards. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, come out of the hips, come out of the heart, come out of the head. And we're still attached to the head, but sort of lost in thought or consumed with fear. These are uh, some examples. Not present. Those are lots of uh, side effects that show up from being in a disembodied state. Right. And and why do we get disembodied? Like, why does that happen? Yeah. You know, it's not really a failure or something we're doing wrong. It's a, it's a regular strategy, let's say, on the part of the soul or the individuated essence to survive or thrive. And so just like so many other strategies that we consciously or unconsciously deploy in our lives to succeed, at some point there's a glass ceiling that begins to limit us. And disembodiment is one of those, ex those examples. We disembody to get through traumatic or stressful experiences in our lives. And then at some point we recognize there's a deeper experience available here, a deeper connection to self, to source, and so on. Right. So, so it sounds like it's more like a, like a survival mechanism or a, a, like yeah. a coping mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great way to think of it. And everyone encounters it. It's not like if you're disembodied, you're somehow flunk some test. Think of it as more a success. You know, something is happening just the way it happens for every regular human being. But then there's this opportunity, this invitation for us to embody and really come into a powerful feeling state which is, as you've said, very creative. It opens up a state of flow. There are all sorts of really wonderful, it's kind of byproducts of being embodied. Yes, you know, slimmer body, it's all fantastic. Yeah, yeah, they, there you go, <laughs> woo <-hoo. laughs> um, Now, another term that you, I know that you use quite a bit is called resonance. Yeah. Now, you know, here in the My Movies community, we, you know, we often talk about, you know, being in alignment or being in a, a you know, a, 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 a vibrational match to the things that we want to attract. Yeah, yeah. Is that what you mean by resonance? Like, what, what, what's yeah. your interpretation of that? Yeah, t to me, resonance is the sort of the outflow of what happens on a visceral or on a felt level in our bodies. Not because of thoughts we're having, not because of intentions we're holding, but because we're coming to our actual natural state of being. And in that state, that's what I would describe as resonance. And for me, it's really a division between two things. You know, it's really easy to get into the story. This is going wrong, this is going right, and so on. But if we just think of it as dissonance and resonance, our goal is to reduce the amount of dissonance that we're experiencing and increase the amount of resonance. And embodiment is a huge, huge pathway to increasing resonance. And very much a state of alignment, flow. Those are joy, but it's inner joy. It's not joy that's anchored to an outer experience. It's it's anchored just simply to our being. It's a right. pretty profound state. So it sounds like what you're saying is for us to um, to connect to you know the divine or God or whatever you want to call that. Sure. Rather sure. than looking outside, we actually need to go inside. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think that's necessarily a new idea, right? We hear that over and over again. But embodiment is a real practical, specific thing that we can do that is not about trying to imagine a different state in our bodies. When we move into a, a more embodied state, it's a feeling that is erupting from within our being. Not one that we're saying, I feel good, I feel good, or I'm happy, healthy, and wealthy. Nothing wrong with those things. Mantras and intentions are a very powerful and important part of our lives. This is something that underlies all of that. We could say it's the foundation for everything that we do moving forward in the context of spiritual mastery. Right. All right. So I, so I have a question for you. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, um, you know, when we talk and teach law of attraction, yeah, we're talking about you know consciously doing things to help influence outcomes in our life. Right. You know, so we're clear about you know where it is that we want to end up. We're doing sure. visualizations. We're changing our thoughts. We're taking actions. Sure. So how does that marry together with this with this um, you know idea of you know spiritual mastery or embodiment or resonance? How how do the two of those reconcile together? Sure. So if you think about it in in a thinking posture, we're in our heads, right? So we're imagining, we're visualizing, and other things begin to happen. We feel things happen. I have to close my eyes, Natalie. I just want to sort of drift into this a little bit. And then if we're in a sort of an intention-based environment, now we're in our hearts as well. We're feeling whatever it is that we're wanting to attract or create in our lives. And what I'm talking about then is taking the next step forward. If, if we... Um, if we're in a posture where we believe we have to sort of conduct or direct the divine, right, there's an upper limit to what our experiences are. And that upper limit relates to my ability to imagine wonderful, extraordinary things. And however creative I might be, that's still less than the full expression or experience of, let's say, divine resonance, if we could use those words. And so as we move down in our bodies and drop all the way into our hips, we move from a posture of sort of creating or control into a posture, we could call it of allowing. I love the word surrender just because it's kind of a button pusher, right? It pushes my buttons, it pushes everyone's buttons. But if we just think about surrender, you know, metaphorically, it's like throwing out the map. So another way of thinking about it is think about the energy of a wave as it comes into the shore right? And so there's this, all this energy is forming this beautiful expression of creativity. There's your intention. There's your visualization. And as the wave hits the sand, it's still traveling up. It still has energy behind it. But then when it reaches the apex, it's not like the water just hangs out there on the, on the side of the beach, right? It drifts back in and it drifts completely back in. So we see this creativity followed by complete release. Same thing with our breath. As I create, I receive, I breathe in. As I let go, I exhale. And if I try to control my breath, like I say to you, I'm only going to breathe, I'm only going to let go of 30% of my breath. At some point, my brain is going to pass out, right? I'm going to, my brain will turn off so I can take a deep breath. My body needs the full breath. Hmm. Okay, so if we come back to the question, if we think about throwing out the map, that is letting go not just of how, but also of what, we open ourselves to the vastness, the, the uh, I want to say mystery, but let's say the thing beyond which we're capable of imagining, still in absolute resonance, still embodied, that is here in this terrestrial experience of ours, that is beyond our ability to imagine. And when we really let go and drop all the way down into our bodies, into our hips, something profound happens that's beyond our ability to imagine. And that's really sort of my challenge and my invitation. It's my invitation and challenge of my own life, and it's the one that I'm, you know, regularly referring to in the work that I do as well. Right. So um, so let me let me rephrase this or paraphrase this in a way yeah. that maybe our community would... Um, sure. Yeah. Some <laughs> I'm not saying they don't understand you, but, but in the language yeah. that I would normally use. Yeah, yeah, so, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, so, um, all right, so we, we're setting goals, we're doing all the conscious work, we're doing yeah. everything we can to, you know, incorporate the yeah. uh, law of attraction. Yeah, yeah. But when we're um, but when we're sort of in this place of embodiment, what we're doing is that we're not just surrendering, but we're we're getting to into a, a place of trust and belief. Yes. That um, even though whatever we want is not going to show up exactly the way we want it to, we know that the way that it will show up will be for our highest good. Beautiful. That's a great way of saying it. Right. And it actually, we could even take it a step further. We could say. Everything that I imagine or that I think I want, let's say, has this amount of resonance to it. But there's that glass ceiling because I'm the one who's imagining it, right? Yeah. I imagine I want it to be this way. But I'm sure everyone can think about this. You can think about this in your life. Millions of examples, I'm sure, where you thought, I really want this, but maybe it happened the way you thought it did. Maybe it was a little bit different. Maybe it was radically different, but there was something completely beyond what you could have imagined that opened up and explored and expressed in your life. Yeah. So I think yeah. you're actually getting, nailing it here. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. yeah. So, I mean, you know, you know, Jack Hanford always says, you know, always end your affirmations with this or something better. I, you know, I yeah. create something better. Yeah. Um, 
And the thing is what we think we want or what we choose that we want is based on our experience and our, our limited view of, of yeah. life or the world or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so when we go this or something better, what we're doing is just opening it up to something that like far surpasses our wildest imagination. Um, yeah. And and yeah. knowing that what, how it shows up. See, I you know what I often will say to our community? Get comfortable in the surprise. Yes. Yes, that's a great way of saying it. Now, I want to issue just a small challenge here, okay? okay? This or something better is still in a state of control, right? Yeah. Because I'm wanting the this or something better from my perspective. Mm -hmm. When I really let go, I don't give up the idea that I'm still excited about this thing. It's that I'm not connected or attached to what is unfolding or how it's unfolding. It's it's a Let's say it's a deeper feeling state in our bodies. You know, if I'm attached to what's happening, I'm, you can see I'm sort of like this. I, what's going to happen here? But if I think, oh, I would love for this to happen, and then I wonder what's going to happen, mm. right? What, what is going to show up? I've done what I needed to do. I've honed my thoughts, my visualizations. I've really shown up for what I think is in my highest and best. Now I wonder what's going to show up. And there's the surprise, right? What, how is this going to, what will come into my experience at this point? Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I can assure you all the amazing, delicious, awesome things that have shown up in my life have never shown up the way I thought they were going to. Spot Ever. on. Spot <laughs> on. Listen, I mean, this is what I'm doing for a living right now, right? I started out as a mortgage lender. I did all this work around you know, sort of certifying at all these levels. And I really thought my purpose here is to help people optimize their tax strategy, blah, 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 right? And at the same time, I was asking in the background, what is my purpose? What is my purpose as I was learning to meditate? And then this answer comes in. And honestly, I didn't like the answer. I thought, look, people are going to think I'm a freak of nature, right? I mean, I'm already a big guy. Now I'm the big guy who does, you know, his hands and feet buzz. That's going to be weird. But once I got over that, I began to realize this life of connection of, I don't want to say significance from a look at me go standpoint, but significance in terms of the nature of the connection between myself and the people that I support and the experiences they're having in their lives. I could have never dreamt that up in my wildest imagination. I even resisted it for a couple of years. And yet here it is. Here we are having this incredible conversation. Absolutely. Well, like our, our time has, has flown by, as I knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> now, I know that you have a gift uh, for our yeah. community. So let's talk yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, what I'd love to share is it, this is actually a training video that I shot, and there's an MP3 as well, so you can watch the video or you can download the audio. And what it is is an actual guided meditation that I call Divine Connecting Breath. And it's a way of moving in a conscious way from a position where we feel disconnected from source or from God and to more connected to source and more connected to God, but also in the process, more connected to ourselves. And it's super simple. It's mm -hmm. extremely simple, um, but it's really, really powerful. People that have gone through this, and I've shared this with tens of thousands of people, when they go through it, it's almost like there's a surprise waiting at the end that they don't realize what's gonna happen. And it's even felt in the body. So it's a wonderful setup for um, embodiment. And you know what? I'll even throw in some embodiment work as well um, as, an, as an additional gift for people that are following through. So you'll get Divine Connecting Breath, the training video, and then some, some work around embodiment as well. I'd love to share that with everyone. Awesome. So guys, yeah. if you're watching this online, just click the banner to the side here to, to go straight through to Ken's website to be able to get those gifts. If you're watching this on the app, click on the banner underneath. Uh, Ken, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nally. It's we, wonderful we to be with you. We can it on all day. But, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have to put an end to it at some point. I know, this time <laughs> construct thing. What's, what's, what's up with that? <laughs> I know. Um, so uh, thanks again, Ken. Um, guys, I encourage you to share this video. Please get the word out. You can do that by clicking the Facebook and the Twitter share buttons on this page. Uh, make sure that once you finish watching the show and collecting Ken's gifts that you um, do the little quiz so we can figure out what is holding you back from success. Um, and if you're watching this online, make sure that you uh, go leave your email so we can send you the manifesting with the master's video e-course. So until next time, remember to live large, choose courageously, and love without limits. We'll see you soon. Beautiful.